Okay guys, um, in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about the General Chemistry 2 final exam. Um, I know today uh, there was the open house on um, pass-fail uh, question and um, you know some other just questions about STEM in general and it seemed like um, there were some questions that popped up about the Gen Chem final exam. So Dr. Friedrich and I wanted to create a video that has all of the information in one place um, so that you can you know uh, refer to this um, over the next few days as you start to get ready for the final so uh, to kind of get started the AC the final last semester last year I guess last semester we had the ACS final exam so that was the yellow books that you guys got you took the exam we collected everything back um, we did it in 110 minutes you couldn't have your phones and your backpacks and all that stuff um, the reason why the ACS is done that way is because those questions are very heavily protected and the ACS does that for obvious reasons because you know they want to make sure that their questions are secure so that the, the test can hold up um, from year to year um, so we can't use the ACS exam because we have to put the questions on Blackboard. So for obvious reasons, we can't do that because then the questions would could potentially get out. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of reproduce the ACS questions um, in what we call like an ACS format, meaning we know what the ACS questions look like. Um, and there are some some banks of questions that you know we've purchased that you can um, put onto Blackboard. So they're going to look very much like what the ACS questions would look like, but when it comes to the standardized ACS exam, it's not going to be that exact same standardized ACS exam. Um, first of all, you're, we're not going to be giving you a sheet with all the equations on it, so uh, unlike with the ACS exam. So that might be something you'll want to kind of put together um, for the exam. Now, again, of course, this is going to be open note, open book because, you know, you'll have all your stuff at home with you. So you will have those as a resource. But, you know, some good things to put together um, that you would get on the ACS exam, you know, make sure you have a periodic table handy, printed out. Um, make sure that you have, you know, a good summary of, of many of the equations. You can actually look up what it, the equation sheet will look like on the ACS final online and make a copy of that if you want to do that. Um, but, you know, that's that's sort of... That's sort of all stuff that you can do on your own and get ready for it. But it's not going to look like that booklet that you got last semester. The questions are going to be very similar, but they're not going to be identical to what would be on a standardized ACS exam. So now the exam format is going to look very, very similar to the lecture exams and, and now uh, very, very similar to what we're doing for the lab exams. Um, they're basically going to be all... Um, they're going to be all multiple choice. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. And they're going to come at you one question at a time. Um, and you're going to basically, you know, run through the questions one at a time. We recommend kind of doing each question in sync so that you're not wasting a lot of time going back and forth. But you can do that if you need to, to check things over or whatever you want to do. So um, all of the, the same um, function, uh, all of the same options are going to, we're going to be putting in all the same options as we normally would into Blackboard. So it's going to feel like the lecture exams um that you've been taking so now one thing that's really important is that it is cumulative from both semesters of general chemistry and it really has to be because you it's so difficult to separate out second semester from first semester um, certainly there are some topics that are kind of unique but what you've noticed is that you've gotten uh gas law questions you've gotten um thermodynamic stuff in the second semester um you've gotten you know um moles and stoichiometry in the second semester so so all of that stuff is going to be built in some of the topics that are very unique to the first semester that we don't necessarily review explicitly in the second semester is um chapters seven eight and nine um that is uh se chapter seven is like quantum theory um planck's constant the einstein relation uh eight is um the periodic trends and um, periodicity, and then nine is Lewis structures, uh, and then I guess 10 is also an extension. I should include that too in, in this because 10 is where we do VSEPR and structure. Now, the good thing is that on, on my YouTube channel, there are um, the lectures for seven, um, eight, and I believe parts of nine are pre recorded along with a good chunk of nine and 10. 
Um, there are bits and pieces of 9 and 10, but if you put it all together, you get a pretty good sizable chunk. Um, that's all on YouTube already. So you can get access to those lectures as they were recorded by me um, so that you can actually review those chapters if you want directly um, because those are pretty unique. But chapters 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, um, we've you know been doing in Gen Chem 2. You know, we've been doing... Um, metastasis reactions, we've been doing um, molarity, molality, all that stuff. So uh, that's all come back. We've been doing some stuff with gases. Um, we saw some stuff with gases in the lab too. So that's all been kind of reviewed. So the exam is going to be 110 minutes uh, long, which is that standard ACS length. Um, the reason why we're doing that is just because you guys are kind of used to it from last year. That's what we did last year and we'll stick to it this year so that you have the same feeling. Um, to cut you guys a little bit of slack, normally the ACS exam would be a total of 70 questions, but to give you, to, so that you have a little bit more time to manage the online issue, we're going to reduce the number of total questions from 70 down to somewhere in the 60s. Um, so, you know, we're not sure exactly what the number is going to be, but it'll be somewhere between 60 and 70, probably somewhere in the middle there, um, you know, so... That's going to give you a little bit more time per question than you would have gotten if this were a standard ACS exam. And that's just mostly to help you deal with the, the online format. So as I said, the question types is going to be 100% multiple choice. Um, this is kind of going to make your life a little easier because you won't have to deal with any of the numeric input things. Uh, so you can go through and do that. Um, the exam window is going to be a five-hour exam window just like what we had before. Now, with this, even though it's going to be five hours um, from probably seven to about 12, it may bleed into another exam time, depending on how things get set up. So if you are coming up on an, an, an afternoon exam and you have to be finished, you're going to want to start your exam earlier in the window, because if you start it at 12, then you'll be running till two or whatever it is. So... Um, Whatever the exam window is, just make sure that you're going to finish your exam, you, that you start your exam in time to finish before you have any other exams that day, okay? I don't know exactly when the five-hour window is going to be. Like, we'll have more information on those specific details, like when it will open, when it will close, um, and things like that as we get a little closer to the exam. But, you know, this is just to give you an idea of what's going to be going on. And also, we're going to have more information to come on what days the exam will be. Um, we're still just we're still discussing amongst ourselves and with the department if we're going to run the Gen Chem final all together for all sections on one day, or if we're going to run it on two days during when the exams are scheduled. Um, we're still working that out. So um, with point seven and eight, we'll have a much better, um, we'll have a much cleaner set of directions for those two things the week after, you know, next week, once you've finished your exam. So um, we'll have specific instructions for when the exam will be coming soon. Okay, so um, how do you prepare for the exam? So the first thing you guys probably are wondering is where can I find multiple choice practice questions? Well, the ACS does have a, a review book out there. You can buy it if you want to. Um, a lot of people bought it already last semester. So, uh, you know, people have it out there. Um, and, uh, you know, this is something that you can, if you look around and you, you know, you look for, you ask around for people who maybe have dropped the course or for sophomores that um, already have the course, you know, you can always, you know, get that review book and buy it from them secondhand. Um, but the ACS does have the review book if you want to buy it, or if you've already bought it, that's a good place to start because the questions are going to look very similar to the ACS format. You absolutely don't need to buy it, but uh, I'm just putting it here as a resource. That's all I'm doing. I'm not advertising for it. Um, you, you're not going to necessarily do any better on the exam if you have it, but it's just there in case you need it. Okay, so um, a, another great resource is the drill questions on Blackboard. So if you look in the extra study materials for each chapter, there are going to be a set of multiple choice questions called the drill questions that go along with that. And they come from the textbook and um, they have the answers with them. So that's a great place to start doing some um, practice questions. Another good free uh, set of questions is the chemistry Olympiad exams. Now, these are online, you can take them, but I, I do have to warn you, 
these exams are designed for high school students that are operating at a very high level. Um, these are high school exams. So they are going to look like the ACS questions, meaning they're a good source for getting used to the feel of ACS questions. But because they're, they're even though they're designed for advanced high school courses like AP courses, AP courses don't cover nearly as much as what we cover in our class. At, at, in every chapter, we do a little bit more than what an AP course would, would do. So these are going to cover a good amount of content, but not all of the content. So make sure you don't use this alone as your, as your only source of multiple choice questions. Now, another thing that you can do, and I, I've been a big advocate for this now that we've gone to digital learning, because... You know, you guys can now spend some time looking around for these things. Um, careful Googling can be very helpful with finding multiple choice questions. Now, the reason why I say careful is because you don't want to get questions from anywhere, meaning you want to make sure that you're, you're going to um, institutions that have posted multiple choice questions that are chemistry departments. Um, from other four-year colleges. So, you know, you want to be looking for the .edu, making sure that it's a good four-year program that has, you know, a good general chemistry course. So, um, generally speaking, you won't go wrong with that. I mean, you might find an error here or there um, in those types of question sets, but um, that could be a great source of finding multiple choice questions with good answers and good explanations. Again, we don't warranty any of that because, you know, it's coming from other places. They may do things differently than we do them. So you always want to refer back to what we're doing. But this could just give you some extra, um, an extra pool of, of resources that you can check your knowledge. And, you know, maybe you'll get a different answer and it'll prompt you to ask a question that will help you to, to, to learn more. Okay, so where can I find helpful material to review last semester? Um, first and foremost, uh, and I didn't even put it in here because it's obvious, you have your textbook and your lecture notes. Um, if, for example, you left or you don't have your lecture notes from last semester, you know, don't be shy in asking friends to kind of help out. Um, you know, if you have a couple of friends, maybe two or three, and they're willing to scan their notes in for you, you know, you could ask them, hey, can you do chapters one through three? You do chapters four, five, six. You do chapters seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten is very short. And then, you know, without them having to do a tremendous amount of work, you can get a, a, a very good resource if you don't have that already. If you have your notes from last year, then you're all set. You don't you don't need to. You can just refer, refer to those. Now, again, uh, with Blackboard, go to the extra study materials for each chapter. At the bottom of that folder is a folder that contains all of the content from first semester. So in each folder, you're going to find YouTube videos, online tutorials. Um, I did worksheets for nomenclature, worksheets for sig figs, worksheets for unit conversions. Um, all have YouTube videos associated with them. So um, that's a great resource to go. And like I said, chapters 7, 8, 9, and uh, I think some of 10 may have YouTube videos pre-recorded online um, on, on YouTube already, on my channel of YouTube. So you can get those. And then also, you know, if there's a topic that kind of you don't remember and you're looking for just a kind of a concise review, again, you know, careful use of things like YouTube can be helpful here. Uh, again, you want to look for videos from reliable, reliable sources, um, meaning look for videos that are coming from um, professors or instructors at major institutions, and almost as if you were to stumble upon my channel and have that, that treasure trove of videos that are there. Um, they may have videos from the first semester that I haven't had a chance to produce yet. Um, now, remember, there might be errors. Even, even in my videos, um, a couple of you guys pointed out that I have some errors, which I have to fix. Um, I got better as time went on with the videos, but, um, you know, there might be some errors. So you should always refer to your notes. Or if something doesn't look right, you know, cross-reference it with the, your textbook and your notes to make sure that you're getting the, the best information possible. Okay, guys, so that's, um, that's how you can prepare for the final. Um, if anybody has any questions, you can either email Dr. Friedrich or Dr. I, or Dr. Dr. I, or, or me. You could tell what um, being in quarantine is doing to us. Um, you can either email Dr. Friedrich or, or me, and um, we can help you with those questions. 
Also, uh, another great resource has been Dr. Friedrich's live streams. Um, he may run one, you know, uh, next week or the week after um, to do some review for the final exam. Uh, and and that's it, guys. And and this should be um, pretty similar to what you did last year. Okay, so I want to wish everybody good luck. Um, for those of you, since I won't be seeing any of you um, after this, have a have a fantastic summer. Um, good luck with everything that's going on. I hope that this thing, you know, gets itself sorted out by the summer and you guys can get back to your normal routine. When you come back next semester, if you're interested in research, you know, let us know because we're actively doing research in the chemistry department. And, um, you know, just good luck with everything. And I hope you guys have, have a good um, summer and a good start to organic.